this week in the field, working the scene and finding that composition. Hi everyone, I'm Scott Davenport and welcome to In The Field. Thanks for joining me today. Before I go and show you today's footage, I want to get your questions about landscape photography. Specifically, what is it that you find most challenging when you're first arriving on scene? Uh, is it reading the scene? Is it deciding how to compose? Uh, what, what's, what do you struggle with when you get out to a location? I'd like to hear from you. Leave comments below the video or contact me through my website. And I want to be able to work these into future in the field episodes so that they become even more valuable for you. So today's topic is about working the scene. And I went into the, the archives, some, some footage I took last summer while I was in Japan in this one area called Kushimoto. There are really cool rocks that reach out into the the shallows. And uh, one of the evenings that I went there, I went several times, I spent a lot of time just continuing to move around and refining compositions with uh, kind of a central theme of this one particular rock formation, but just kept working the scene. And so I want to show you uh, the various compositions that I was trying out while I was on this location. Uh, back at Kushibura Rocks, Hangoshi, it's a very different evening. It's a uh, very overcast, really no chance of the sun making an appearance, but I'm going to take advantage of the lower tide and I'm thinking of some black and white work. This sand is already very dark and black and uh, there's a bits of white clouds behind some of these rocks here. So I'm going to get down in there and uh, just really do some wide angle work and focus on shapes, lines, and form. And as it turns out, I really like this uh, initial composition here. These little streams of water leading up to what has become my favorite rock among the uh, the sequence of them with the little tree on the top. You can see how I'm set up here. Shooting F16. I've moved exposure compensation down just a nudge. You can see the zebra stripes up here. That's telling me I've got a little bit of blowout, but I know from past experience that small amount is not going to be a problem. I actually took a test shot. We can see, and here's the histogram. I'm not blowing out. So the zebras are telling me, I've got a chance of blowing out, but I won't. But uh, let me get that back on. If I went to nominal, you can see how much more of the sky is getting lost. So just bringing that down a little bit is helping a whole lot. Let the camera do the rest. F16, I'm focused in right here, about a third into the frame. Turning off my manual focus. Sorry, turning on manual focus so that I won't, uh, won't refocus. And I'll just fire off one more shot. And it's as simple as that. No need for filters. There's uh, nothing long exposure-wise here. Everything's very still and calm. And uh, that is going to be a really nice shot. So next one, getting down low, grabbing some reflections in uh, these little tide pools that are here. At a higher tide, this would all be filled in. It would be absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to hope I get an opportunity for that maybe tomorrow. So I'm just going to wait for this gentleman who's scoping out some of the little creatures that live in these things to move through the frame. If he ends up on the other side of this rock, go in the, uh, in, you know, from, from camera left to right, that actually would be really nice for some scale. Doesn't look like he's going to do that though. And I'm really working this one rock, this scene. I've, I've moved up closer to it and found a bit of pools of water. Every once in a while, you get a little bit of an ocean surge that comes through, makes a bit of whitewash. And that, if I drag the shutter, make a longer exposure, it's going to smooth that out and give me a nice reflection of this rock. So I'm framing up vertically so I can maximize that, making it tight just about this, uh, this main triangular rock. I get out the filters. Right now I'm metering at a third, so I'm thinking about a six stop to get a couple of seconds of uh, shutter exposure, and then just wait for the tide to do its thing. This is going to be probably my last shot of the evening. I've just taken a uh, three bracket sequence of these rocks here, some interesting sky, and now I'm just waiting for this and I'm grabbing the little spills that work their way through this particular chamber. And then I'll blend those in to get a final photo. So that was a nice one there. Let's see how that, see how that came out. So right there in the center, you can see like right there. If I zoom right in and try to focus on that, I'm getting the spills that are coming over those rocks. And then as it's spread out through the, the chasm there, if I get another couple of uh, nice spills there, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be able to fill in this scene pretty nicely. Those are kind of mid-ground things. Those are pretty far away, so I don't need a lot, just a little bit of detail. And I did notice some terrible, terrible looking 
spot. Right, right there. Right, ooh, look at that thing. Jeez. Right over there in the sky. It's not a bird. It's in every, every frame I've taken for the last five minutes. Working this scene is important for a few reasons. First is you'll come away with more than one view of the scene. You'll have walked around, you'll take different angles, different compositions, maybe wide shots, maybe close up shots, all those types of things. And you won't just have a library filled with you know, 50 or 100 takes of the same scene. Now there are times when that's important. Weather plays a role in landscape photography. And if the weather is changing, you're waiting for the light, you, know, you might have you know, 20 or 30 photos of the same scene. But that implies you've hunted around and you worked the scene, you found that composition. Another reason to work the scene is you might find a better composition. You might just find a better photo. Many times I'll have found what I think is the best take on a particular scene, given you know, the weather of the day. And then either I get bored or I go, yeah, I'll come back here when the light's best and you know, I'll go explore and do something else with the camera for a while. And I end up finding something better. And so moving around, you move around, you, 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 got, you got to explore a little bit before you decide to plant the tripod legs. Get to a site early. You have to give yourself time to do that. And perhaps one other reason is that you will learn something. Now, you might learn something that you don't want to repeat in the future, and that's okay. You're still learning something. You might learn something that you want to try again at another location, or if it's someplace you visit frequently, go back in you know, different conditions, whatever it might be, you're going to learn something. You're going to progress your photography and move it forward. And we, we all want that. That's what we want to do. Well, so now that I've watched this footage again, I'm excited to go back and visit some of these photos. There are a bunch that I haven't processed. And I'll pick one and show you the results of that on in post later this week. Hopefully you'll come back and check that out. And that's going to do it for today's In the Field episode. Again, one more time, I want to get your questions about landscape photography. What is the thing that you are struggling with the most when you're in the field. I want to hear about that. Let me know and I, want, you know, I can give you some answers through the comments, but I'd like to work some of that stuff into future videos. Well, until next time, my name is Scott Davenport and happy shooting.